I'm very excited about this lesson. I think I figured out one-way hash functions. But wow, I could not find anything online to explain what I figured out, so I don't even know if I've got it right. Uh, that's why I call Web3. Learn and teach Web3. So, teach me if I'm going wrong. So, data comes in a series, as we know, of zeros and ones, because it's on a binary system. So a switch can only be on or off, and by that on and off, they make a system of uh, numbers in translating back and forth between bases. Now, I'm gonna teach bases if you don't know them, like how to, that's why in my first lesson I say, a number is a symbol that represents a quantity. We're all used to, you know, this number meaning seven, a quantity of seven, or this number meaning a quantity of eight. But there, in a binary system, you only need one symbol, one less than the base. A base of two only needs a, a one. And then with a one and a placekeeper, now you can make all sorts of numbers out of a bunch of zeros and ones. So here comes data. Looks just like this as it comes through a computer. Okay, it's just lots of blips, of zeros and ones and zeros and ones and zeros and ones and zeros and ones. Now what does that mean? It could be a photo, it could be a message, it could be a phone number. Now, uh, we have chaos, but I'm going to continue with my lesson with dogs and werewolves, photo bombing my video, bombing my fucking lesson. Hey bro, you wanna learn base systems? Hey bro, you wanna learn how to do a one-way hash function? You wanna play the guitar and be the background music while I do my lesson? Yeah, That'd be cool. Okay, well set up the guitar and you start playing, but let me keep teaching. Moose, shut up! Buddy, quiet down. It's just our neighbor. Just our neighbor. Okay. So, as I... Now, what I think a hash function does is it takes that random series of numbers... Please understand my attitude. Could I p please continue with what I'm doing now? Okay. No problem. Okay. So, within the chaos... They take, and this is what I think they mean by 512-bit hashes. Buddy, buddy, please, could I, could I concentrate on this, man? You know, this is, I've been working on this all day, and I want to video it before the sun goes down. And this is my art. This is my, you know, this what you're doing to me please right now is as if you're playing the guitar, and I come in and start part. screaming at you while you're playing. Okay? So, you know, and you're pissing off my dog because you're acting suspicious. It's okay, Moose. Oh, Lord, grant me the serenity. Yes, Lord. Okay. So data comes in a stream of zeros and ones. Ta-da! So you have that stream of data that means something once it's translated. In fact, okay, if the hash function were to shut it, Moose! Okay, calm down. I'm aware, okay? Okay, buddy, buddy, I know I'm aware. It's not your fault, but if I'm asking you to shut up, you should shut up. Okay, so if... Hash function were to take three bytes at once, where I think 512 bit hash functions take 512 bits, but to have one we can do by hand will take three bits, and that also helps me explain how in fucking base systems. Your mother's calling you. I think it's Prince Motherfucking Spaghetti Day. All right, so we would split these into groups of three bits. 
If we were to do that in binary language, that would be zero, that would be one, that would be two. Please, Lord, let somebody discover me and get me the fuck out of here where I can do cryptography for fucking money instead of for fun. Zero, one, one represents three. One, zero, zero represents four. Because always remember, if your base system is two and you square it, you're going to get one base system with two placekeepers after it. So even if it's a base system of 10 and you square it, you will get the same number. But however, in binary, one, zero, zero represents four. Then you have one, zero, one. So we have a base system of five going on here. Or that string of data is actually very similar to what those characters would come up once those binary figures are fed in. So, now we're going to switch back to, from binary, to base 10. However, we're going to take the three bits of data and translate them uh, literally as if they're written in base 10. So therefore we got 0, 1, 10, 11, 100, 101. Now, our next rule is going to be, in our function, that we're going to take those quantities written in the base 10 system and add them up. That gives us 223. Wonderful. Now, we're getting somewhere. That's, that's an irreversible function as it is. So now, we're going to take that 223. Okay? And we're going to go with just one symbol at a time. And guess what we're going to do? We're going to take those base 10 symbols and we're going to translate them back into binary, which will give us A. Number of. If I did this right. 101. 011. One. Now, what I did. So, you take that and you split it into half. And you get two other numbers, which are 101 and 011. Okay? And that's how I think a double signature works, is that they take, give, somebody has that number and somebody has that number. And neither one knows what the other person has. Therefore, they have to put those two numbers together, the five and the three, to get back to the 101 and the 1011. But that is still based on the addition. The next rule, which would be to add those two numbers, five and three, and get eight. So, I could send, under the Byzantine General's problem, I could send the person I want to send the message to the number eight. And I could do that through a lot of different communications that couldn't be spied on. So that they would have the key. So they could check the following data that I send them to make sure that they got an accurate message. Because if they've got the function rules and they apply the function rules, the one-way hash function rules, then they can come up with the number 8. So that verifies that the original string of data does not have anything inserted in it or taken away from it. Because just changing a single one of those bits, if we apply the same function rules, will end up not giving you the number 223, and therefore will not split into that, and therefore will not become the number 8. So there will be some sort of mistake. However, the rules need to be communicated and kept secret. 
and that is why there is a, yeah, and those rules need to be kept so, so anyway, um, as you can see, we can translate a phone number and pass it accurately, or even worse, because any word or letter can be translated into a number, and then those numbers can be translated into different base systems, and that is how to hash anything one way, because you can never, never get from 8 to 223 to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Could not do it this way. You can only do it this way. CJ, String knock off. of stop. data. Stop, CJ, now. Thank you, Janelle. Please stop. Yeah, he's just totally fucking bombing my lesson, but he's Please probably stop. making it interesting at the same time. So you can only go this way. To the, okay, now the next rule is we're going to translate three bits of data. And then from there, back to the base 10, sum them together, come up with 23, break that up into 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, which is binary, if I get it right, the base 2, 2, 3. So that binary, the base 2, 2, 3, you take that, split that in half, translate each one of those binary numbers back into a base 10 decimal number, and if we fork it, then we have the number 5 and the number 3. So even if you knew that there was going to be a, a double signature or a, a final split to 2, you still wouldn't know if those two numbers were 4 and 4 to equal 8, or if they were 5 and 3, or 6 and 2, etc. You would not know. So that's why you can take a long string of data and by doing your hash function come down to even a single number that verifies that whole string. Wow, wow, and it still ended up less than 15 minutes.